I live in a world that feels like it's spinning out of control and I don't feel safe. What do I do? If you vlog in the neighborhood and like me, you walk the same route more or less day after day after day, that you make yourself more vulnerable to predators. If you're gonna vlog, don't go on the same route and try to get out of your neighborhood a little more often. I mean, let's face it, we'd kind of all like to think that we live in cities where we can trust our neighbors, but the world's changing. You'll notice I moved the angle of my camera. You might only catch it at the points where I've already changed it, but the reason that I do that is because it, it gives me eyes in the back of my head. I can vlog and it provides safety. Every now and then I'll just stop and I'll twirl around and literally look at everything in my surrounding. One, because it makes a really cool video clip without any noise in the background, but also because it's allowing me to assess what's going on around me. How well do you know your noises? When you vlog and you're talking, you have to listen twice as hard to everything around you. So I just heard a noise back there. I grew up in the woods. I know what a squirrel sounds like. I'm like, hello squirrel, before I even saw it, I hear you. And then I saw it and I was like, and now I see you. Affirmation that I can trust my instincts. Listen to noises. What do you think they are? How well do you know your instincts? Make note of it. How aware of you of the clothing choices of other people? Is there anything that stands out about each person that you meet? Because if it's for your safety and well-being or for someone else's, it'll get you in the habit of being a little sharper in your mind to pay attention to details. You know, things like hats, pants, jackets, emblems, colors, stripes, stars, something that sticks out. Find something in every single person that you see on the street. One little thing that stands out. And then, should anything happen that you're a witness to someone else's unsafety, you'll make a great eyewitness. See, here's where a camera, if somebody was to clip you, at least you'd get their license plate, right? So you don't have your camera out if a car is coming by to clip you, like you don't want to have it down there because maybe you're having a conversation with somebody, right? Turn around and make contact with hopefully the driver. Don't just assume that because you turn around that they see you. So keep looking until you know you're safe and then continue walking. So if you have to stop, stop. If you can't hold your train of thought, make it part of your video. Nobody's going to condemn you for that. Otherwise, I mean, we won't see your video because you might be dead. The other thing that does is if they are paying attention, especially if they're in a work vehicle like that, you know, if they're doing something stupid, you're going to hold them accountable in your video, whether you're aware of it or not. And hopefully if they're aware, then they're going to start abiding by the laws because not all, a lot of them drive by the laws. <laughs> we have drivers like that just zooming through this community. <sighs> running stop signs. So, you know, that's not just a safety tip for you today. That's a safety tip for your whole neighborhood. Pay attention to what's in front of your feet. Bec and not just what's in front of your feet, but like what's around your feet. Great. But see, exactly, I didn't pay attention. Leave it at that, pay attention to your feet and everything that's around your feet because if you have to jump to the side, like is there a bush right there, you know? Like what's around you? If somebody's gonna attack you or worst case, like a dog or, or somebody on a bicycle comes up behind you and scares the living bejeebies out of you. They're not as cute as they look. They're actually a whole lot cuter. There's, oh my God, there's nothing to worry about with a little squirrel like that. But your safety tip is, do you have your nuts in your pocket? Because you know, some of these guys get real friendly and they want to eat out of your hands. So, you know, if you don't want a squirrel crawling up your legs searching for your nuts, you should probably carry some extra nuts in your pocket. The next safety that I'm going to talk about is the safety of belief, self-belief in you. Something that I lacked probably my whole life. And it's about reclaiming that. So. You'll never feel safe if you're if you don't reclaim you. I'm home and you know, growing up as a kid, we never had a lock at all on our house. And then after we moved into our new house, that lock in our new house, when we finally did get a lock, it wasn't to keep bad people out. It was a, we lived in the middle of the sticks, way up north of the 40. And if you didn't get home at curfew hour, that door was locked and you were sleeping outside. Thank God kids have their own set of keys today, right? All the kids are saying, oh my God, amen, amen. I thought there was something really horrible about being a latchkey kid, but oh, 
oh my god, amen, I have the key to get into my house. Mm -hmm. Up until recently, even though I live in a major metropolis, I have never felt the need to do this. But of late, because of all the, the Trudeau shit show and what's happening in probably your town or city or community, it's the same everywhere. Uh, lock your doors at the end of the day. And sometimes, maybe during the day, right? Like I'm on the third floor, but we don't have extra safety measures in place. I mean, in here I do. I got cast iron and belly bats and like you don't want to come in here. Because, you know, like the kitchen's right at the door. And the bedrooms are way down, but... You gotta get through the kitchen, and I'm usually always in the kitchen at every hour. And if you do make it down to the back, well, I've got an arsenal of weapons down there too, so don't ever think of trespassing against me. I will not attack, but I will defend. And if that involves your life instead of mine, I don't know. I still, to this day, do not know what I'm capable of. And I would not want to be the person to test that. <laughs> Lock your door when you get home. First thing, but make sure, don't be like my neighbor downstairs who always locks the door but leaves her keys dangling outside. So we should probably do a caveat. Remember to bring your keys in and then lock your door. Okay, just a minute, Pep. I gotta go take the garbage out and then I'll come back and love you and feed you. Hold on, I'll be right back. Always take your phone with you even when you do something simple like take out the garbage because day or night, you know, if you're attacked, at least you can record who and what might be attacking you. I mean, let's not be paranoid here, but like, let's seriously acknowledge the fact that the world just isn't the same anymore, right? Are you going to be my guard cat? Okay, if you are gonna leave your front door open, leave your guard cat or guard dog, just ask them to stay there at the front door. You know, if somebody's coming in, they're either gonna be loved by that thing or they're going to be harmed by that thing. And if they're loved by that thing, it might make them stop and think, oh my God, do I really wanna hurt the people that are here? Because like, look at this cat, it's friggin' amazing. It's, oh my God, it's bringing out the love in me. Do I still wanna continue with this? All kidding aside, your pet at the front door, if you leave it open, can create a psychological barrier in somebody that's thinking of trespassing through your front door. Unless, of course, they're the kind of person that would come home and kick the dog or shoot it in the head. Well, sorry, pet. Like, I love you, but wrong place, wrong time. And I forgot to lock the door. That's on me. Is it time to eat? Yeah, we better show them. See, we lock the door. We lock it. That makes her feel safe here. And when she wants to lay here and look outside, that's typically the time that I'll come and put her in the kitchen. That's a safety tip for your pet. You should wash their bowls, especially if you live in warm climates and there's flies around. Flies will find their way into your house. I mean, I've got notorious flies coming into my house, in case you haven't seen the green bottle fly video. I'll link it below. They can be harbingers of disease. And you know, you don't want your little pipi paree getting sick. So wash the bowl before you put new food in because this is how you help the, your little buddy live a long, healthy life. Can we get a paw, man? <laughs> Somebody's got some loving for you. Choo choo, choo choo your food. Why do you need to chew your food? Because if you chew your food, then it's easier for your little tummy to digest, which means that it's a whole lot easier on your whole body. You'll have more energy. Learn to chew slowly savor what you're chewing in every bite but when you just like ram it in and a couple chews and because you never have time to eat i mean trust me i lived that life for years a lot of times i just constantly nibbled on the job never actually sat down and had a full meal that's something i don't think i've ever yet really grown into i mean partly yes partly no i'm putting my socks away don't judge me okay that's it for today goodbye i never knew i could be so intentionally rude i'm sorry please forgive me i love you thank you